Blog Talk Radio. This is Bustin' Loose in Faith with none other than Apostle Dudley Tebow and Prophetess Lisa Tebow. Welcome, welcome, welcome to a broadcast that brings you word and encouragement for your soul. We want you to remember that you don't have no worries. All you need is faith in God. Bustin' Loose in Faith airs Tuesdays and Fridays at 6 p.m. Central Time. Now, without further ado, let's get into this broadcast. And may God bless you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God is good and worthy to be praised. All praise, all glory, all honor belongs to him this day and forevermore. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we approach our own grace, we come to your husband and ourselves with your mighty hand here tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, we get out of the way that you may have your way. O oh, precious Father, right now, on my seven, I need my hand. Invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to come on in like a rushing mighty wind. We direct and ordain our footsteps. Pray to people's heart to see thy word in spirit and in truth. We find up all technical difficulties and anything that try to hinder the word of God from going forth. Take authority over the prince of the air in the name of Jesus. Thank you for answering prayers on a request. But most of all, salvation go forth and the kingdom of God may grow. From this day um, forward, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. If you have your Bible, then I'd like to open to the book of Galatians. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 13. Hallelujah. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse, excuse me, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Galatians, uh, I mean, Second Corinthians 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is that, now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. This is the word of God, the people of God, may the Lord add a blessing to the years and to the doers of his holy word. Brothers and sisters in Christ, just for the next few minutes, I want to talk about standing fast in the liberty of Christ. Standing fast in the liberty of Christ. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Beloved, the liberty paid for by Jesus Christ is to be preserved at all costs. Galatians 5 and 13 says, For ye were called to freedom. Brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but to love, serve, one another. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. People of God, by God's grace, are we freed from fear and bondage. We are freed from self pleasing, freed from following the course of this world, freed from the power and influence of Satan. Yes, the devil goes as a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. But John 10.10 10 says, the thief come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So let us walk in the liberty of Christ, the one who freed us. 
Yes, beloved, the greatest freedom of all comes from Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. It is the only freedom that can be guaranteed, and Jesus Christ is the only authority that can guarantee it. Another freedom that we as believers of Christ can experience is the freedom from the tradition of men. The Bible says here in the book of James 3, verse 9 and 10, Therewith bless we God, even the God, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Yes, beloved, we are reminded that many times we believe that we are godly people because we maintain tradition that makes us feel holy. For instance, we come to church, the assembly, every Sunday. We pray every day. But at the same time, we gossip or we talk about people behind their mask. You see, beloved, believers of Christ, the tradition that we have been practicing for years should not be elevated to sacred standing, especially if they are not in a line with what God's word is saying. It is very dangerous in 2024 to set up unbiblical standards for others to follow. And we must, we as God's people must never use God as an excuse to neglect our own responsibility. Remember this always, that God's principles never changes, and his law do not need additions. Standing fast in the liberty of Christ in 2024 is a must for every child of God. Yes, beloved, through Christ, we also have freedom from the works of the flesh. We live, when we look around in 2024, we live in a promiscuous, non-restricted society. Everything goes. And it is so easy for us, even as Christians, Believers of Christ, to overlook or to tolerate some immoral behavior, such as greed and drunkenness, while remaining outraged by others, such as thieving and adultery. Beloved, there, there are no big sins, and there are no little sin in God's eyes. All unrighteousness in God's eyes is sin. You see, sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay. But in the end, sin will collect its wages, and the wages of sin is death. We cannot condone, condone sin in any way, nor can we be selective about what we condemn or excuse. You see, child of God, the God of the universe, expect you as a follower of Christ in any age or era to have high standards 
and to regard your body as his temple. Philippians 4, verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. The God of the universe, the one that sits high and look low, the one that knows us all by name the very hairs on our head. He's always looking, and his angels is always looking. So as a believer of Christ, when you walk in the liberty of Christ, you enjoy great freedom, a freedom that was bought at a great price, a freedom that only Jesus Christ was able to, to satisfy. Beloved, as born-again believers of Christ, we must abide in the teaching of Jesus Christ. See, the word abide means to remain. Abide means to stay. So, beloved, to choose our enslavement is to determine our destiny. Whether we want to admit it or not, each and every one of us will hearken to one or, or the other slave master. We either become a slave for Christ or we become a slave for the devil. It's your choice. Bible says here in Romans 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I don't know about you, but I decided to be on the Lord's side. I realized that that, that, that that once I was lost and didn't know how to come out of the darkness I was in. But when Jesus Christ was, pre was presented the gospel, I came to the place of total surrendering my life to Christ. Standing on the word of God, it says in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And once I came to the realization of, 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 of giving my life to Christ, of acknowledging that I'm a sinner, asking Christ to uh, let him know how sorry I was for the sins that I've committed, admitted and made an about face, a 180-degree turn to where my life changed. God came. And because of what Jesus did on Calvary, shed his blood for missing my own sins, nailed the sins of the world upon his shoulders and placed it on an old rugged cross, died placed in a borrowed tomb and after three days rose up with power from on high. Because he rose, because he lived, we can face tomorrow. We can continue to live on because of the ultimate sacrifice that he made for all mankind. He is the way, the truth, and the light. So, beloved, our liberty in Christ it freed, it freed us from sin, but it did not free us to sin. So, as a believer in Christ, on a daily basis, we must make a decision 
We must make a choice to remain in Christ. First Peter 2 and verse 16 says, Live as free men, but do not use your freedom or your liberty as a cover-up for evil living, for evil. Live rather as a servant, servant of God. Again, we are warned here in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 13. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Yes, child of God, for with liberty, freedom, comes responsibility. I'm going to say it again for those that are listening and listening at a later date. Child of God, for with liberty or freedom comes responsibility on your part. Remember, there's always, as a believer of Christ, when Christ sets you free, he also makes you responsible. So walking in the liberty of Christ is achieved when we pattern our lives after Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. He is a set example for us to follow. We learn in the word of God that the scripture says for us to study. Second Timothy 2, verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved on the God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. See, the Apostle Paul also reminds us of what Galatians 3, verse 16 says, in the echoes of the verse, let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. So, child of God, the more familiar you become with the life of Christ by studying his life and learning how he desired you to live, the more you will be led by the Spirit, to become more like Christ Jesus. Yes, beloved, the word walk refers to progress. As a child of God, you must yield each moment of your life to the controlling of the Holy Spirit. Yes, all three operate as one. God, the Father, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're all in agreement and part of the Godhead. Yes, beloved, stand in the liberty where Christ has set you free. People of God, we love freedom, and freedom is a priceless treasure. I am reminded here in the book of Ephesians, Chapter 5, verse 15 says, See then you walk circumspectly or carefully, not as fools, but as wise. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the, with the Holy Spirit and grieve not the Spirit of God. Behold, this is not a one-time event, but it is a lifestyle of yielding to God's spirit. Our lives is intended to be a partnership with the Holy Spirit. Beloved, in the book of 1 Corinthians, 
6, verse 19, it says, Do you know that your body are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you, whom ye have received from God? You are not your own. This believer of Christ, being led daily by God's Spirit, is both your birthright and your adoption papers. If you are a believer in Christ, the third person of the Trinity, which is the Holy Spirit, lives inside of you. He lives by God's grace. That is the same, the same power that raised Jesus from the grave abides in you. You see, God has put God has put great treasures in our earthen earthen vessel. God knows what He's doing. He's a God that sits time and look low. He's a God that has all power in his hand. He's a God that's willing, ready, and able to meet our each and every need. We are reminded here in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 14, it tells us that for all who are led by the Spirit of God, these are children of God. So, beloved, the Holy Spirit that, that lives inside of us is the same spirit that inspired the Holy Scriptures. People of God, the Holy Spirit is the way that Jesus speaks to us today and also guides us. And Jesus said that these, these who are his, his very own, would have the capability or the capacity to hear his voice. He says, my sheep knows my voice, and no other will they follow, because they belong to me. You see, child of God, to be guided by the Holy Spirit is to be guided by Jesus Christ. We are reminded here of what Second Corinthians 3, verse 17 said. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So believer of Christ, the Holy Spirit, works to transform your heart and to guide your action. You see, as a follower of Christ, your job is to obey the leading of God's Holy Spirit. The Word of God reminds us of what First Samuel 15, verse 22 says. In the because of the verse, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fed of ram. Also in the word of God here in the book of Psalm 37, division 23, the steps of a good man are established by the Lord, and he delights in his way the steps of a good man are established or ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his way. His beloved child of God, God's word is full of great and precious promise. If you, as a student of the word of God, are reading through the Bible 
and see a promise from God. You should say to yourself that this belongs because Second Corinthians chapter one verse twenty says, "For all the promises of God in Him are yea, and in Him, Amen, unto the glory of God by us." Yes, beloved, the God that we serve has positioned us to receive his best. But we got to be determined within ourselves. Our heart has to be fixed. Our mind has to be made up. That the world is behind us. And the cross is before us. So as a child of God, your determination should be to please him each and every day of your life. I reminded here in the book of Hebrew 11 and 1, it said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrew 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. And them that come to God must believe that he is who he say he is. So at this time that we are living in, it's time to stand fast in the liberty of Christ. In other words, don't be backing up. Remain. Stand fast. Unmovable in the faith. Hebrews 11 and 6 reminds us, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. And them that come to God must believe that He is who He say He is. And He is a reward of them that diligently seek Him. So be seeking Him tonight. As we draw nigh to him, we want him to draw nigh to us. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we serve an awesome God. Yes, people of God, we have a green light for the abundant covenant living. But our necessary response to God's promises should always be amen. And the word amen means so be it. So, beloved, God's God's yes calls for our amen. God's yes calls for our amen. I hear you talking about what Jesus did for you. Spread your gospel, but is it the truth? Judging people high and low out of self-righteousness. Jesus said don't judge no one when your stuff is a mess. Live for real. Live for real. If there's a change in your life, you need to live for real. Live for real.
respect you as a child or follower of Christ. In any age or era, to have high standards and to regard your body as God's temple. Because the temple, the Holy Spirit is where, the, which, where he abides in the temple, the body. We are reminded that the word says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things and pass away, behold, all things shall become new. You see, when we, when, when we walk in the liberty of Christ, the one who has set us free, we enjoy great freedom. As born-again believers in Christ, we must abide in the teaching of Christ. Because he is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one that, that have set the example for us to follow. He is the one that we can look on, look to when we get a little weak. He's the one that 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 have paved the way for Christianity. So let us live in freedom. But don't but don't allow our freedom or our liberty to be a cover up for evil. No, we must do things right in the eyes of God. Twenty four seven seven days a week. Again I'm I'm reminded here child of God, that the more familiar you become with the life of Christ by studying his life and learning how he desires you to live, the more you will be led by the Spirit to become more like Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. So we, as believers of Christ, must always remember that we're not alone anymore, that we've been bought with a price. And we, we can't take this lightly. Our walk with Christ is very important. When we look at the word of God that says in Galatians 3, verse 11, it says, But that no man is justified or declared righteous by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. Yes, beloved, here using the Apostle Paul word in the book of Galatians, it is used as an encouragement for us to pursue a life of holiness and not in our own strength, but in the knowledge of God's empowerment. Empowerment grace in our lives. Yes, remember this always as a child of God. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled. Yes, beloved, when you became or when you become a Christian, your dependency is upon Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of your faith. You see, the word liberty means to be free. 
believers, we are we are free, men and women, only in Christ. Remember that none of us is free. It's, it's free born by our, by nature. We was all born in sin. And the Bible says in Romans three twenty three, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see, before we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives, you and I and all mankind was born from the condemnation to the law of God, to sin, self, Satan, and the world. But thank God that God had a plan. Behold, the liberty that we that was that needed to be provided, as we know, it required a liberator. It it required someone to intercede, and that someone is the Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What would Christ has made us free? Yes, Jesus Christ paid the sin debt in order for his people to go free. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to quicken us as sinners so that we can be brought brought to Christ and to the liberty which Christ has obtained for us all. Oh, what a blessing it is to know that the God that we serve is more than able to help us to overcome in all areas of our lives. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we have we have God the Father. Who is who has helped us and provided a plan by sending the Son Jesus Christ to become that ultimate sacrifice for God and for man, took it upon him his shoulders the sins of the world. And went to Calvary's cross, shed his blood for the remission of our sin. The Bible says if if we say we have a sin, we lie. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Even in our shortcoming. According to First John one nine said, "If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness." Even in our shortcoming, God is still merciful. He's still gracious. Oh, what a wonderful God that we serve! Again tonight, we was talking about standing fast in the liberty of Christ. Christ, our mediator rose up and sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. Egging us on to go on a little bit further in the things of God. To endure all the way to the end because Jesus is coming back for a church without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. He's coming back for a pair of people to take us to a prepared place. So just hang on in there. Be encouraged in 2024, regardless of what people may say or do, stay connected in the vine. Stay connected with Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. So there'll be times when things will get hard. You'll feel like throwing in the towel. But always step back and reflect for a minute. 
And remember, God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He promised never to leave you nor forsake you. He is an awesome God. He is a good God. He knows how to get our attention. He knows how to keep us if we want to be kept. So we thank God again for the teaching tonight of staying fast in the liberty of Christ, the one who has come to set you free. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we just thank God for everything that took place. We, uh, if you would like to get in contact with us, um, you can contact us at Dudley Tebow, Tebow or Lisa Tebow, 8544 West Belfry Avenue, number 51715, Houston, Texas, 77071. Again, if you'd like to contact with us, contact us or write to us or send us the offer, you can send it at Dudley or Lisa Tebow, 8544 West Belfort Avenue, number 51, number 715, Houston, Texas, 77071. God's will and Jesus Terry will meet again on Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. God bless. God keep you. It's my prayer. Have a good night.